Hey guys, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So you guys may have noticed I've not, have not gotten around to any Space Engine exploration. That's because I'm mostly waiting on my new microphone, which should be in tomorrow. Um, it is a Mod Mic 4.0, and the reviews are absolutely great on it. I'm getting the unidirectional version, so the quality might not be quite on par with this microphone. Because this is an AT2020, it is a studio microphone, it's really nice. But I really need that unidirectional like noise cancelling because, well, my house is just too loud. And that'll give me a little bit more freedom to record without like things like my chair squeaking so loudly and the keyboard clacking and all that. But uh, another thing that I got today, or tonight, is uh, I just picked up a Western Digital, Western Digital My Passport USB 3.0 um, 2 terabyte hard drive. So it's nice and quick, it gets about 120 megabytes per second on the read and writes, and uh, that's sequential. And, uh, yeah, it's perfect for actually storing my videos on. It's actually really quick through USB 3. I've actually never owned a USB 3.0 device before. But, man, that is way better than, like, a USB 2 hard drive or flash drive or whatever. So, yeah, I have 2 terabytes of storage now, which means I could uh, I have quite a few months, maybe even a year of storage. But what that also means is my videos now, as you can tell, are silky smooth, 60 FPS. So 1080p, 60 FPS. Okay, so without further, further delay, let's go ahead and continue on. I have a couple suggestions here, just a couple simple ones. And the first one is, what would happen if you just turned the Earth and Moon into gas? So, the Moon is not actually orbiting Earth in this simulation, so let's go ahead and try to open one where it's actually visible. Let's see. Moon. Earth and Moon. Is this orbiting the Sun? No, it's just stationary. Okay, that's a bit weird. Let's try that again. Let's try... Earth and centric moon. Earth and close moon tidally locked. Actually, that was one of the suggestions. What would happen if you tidally locked Earth? Well, there you go. That's what would happen if you tidally locked them in a very close orbit. Um, I imagine if it was a further orbit, it would look pretty much exactly like this. But uh, since the moon's very close, it's caught in the Earth's Roche limit. And it's actually tearing apart and forming a beautiful ring while also kind of colliding into Earth a little bit, which is probably not too good for Earth. I don't think there is a sun in this simulation. Not that I could tell. And try to find a simulation where it's actually, like, available. Let's try solar system and see if we can find one with, like, all the moons and stuff. Planet 9 in our solar system. Solar system non-moons. Um, solar system with major moons. So hopefully Luna will be available here. There it is. So there's our moon. Okay, what I'm first thing I want to do is make everything visible. I'm going to change the uh, lighting to flashlight so we can always see the planet. Dep uh, my bad. Depending on any rotation. So there we go. And I want to turn off trails and just change it to orbits. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, let's, let's just turn that off completely. So there's our moon, and here's Earth. Now to turn it to gas, I assume you want me to just change it into a kind of a gas giant sort of thing. So let's go ahead and try that out. Um, this suggestion was by... Who was this by? I forgot who this suggestion was by. Um... Ah, yes. Nef diggity dog. Okay, so... Hmm, Earth seems a little bit more frozen than it should be. But that's fine. Let's go ahead and change up Earth. So... Let's go to the parameters here, and change the materials into just hydrogen. And only hydrogen. With a small rocky core. Okay, so that's actually kind of interesting. It's actually evaporating away a little bit. You can kind of see it... Uh, the comet tail disappeared. But there you go, there's Earth as a small gas world. I can't really say gas giant, but there it is. The comet tail disappeared. I think that was just a temporary thing. And then over here we have our moon. So if I go ahead and go to the materials, I could also change it to hydrogen. Which, uh, as you can see, it grew in volume quite a bit. So there's our small gas giant moon, but since it doesn't really have much of a magnetic field or is really being protected by Earth's magnetic field, it seems like it's actually evaporating away. 
which is really interesting. It seems like if I turn it to about this size, it's perfectly fine. But what if I change the iron there, turn down the silicate? No, that doesn't make much of a difference either. Hmm. What about earth? What if we remove the silicate and just leave it iron? There we go. So the moon is burning away. That's very interesting. Kind of gives you an idea of how hard the moon is actually pelted with radiation. If I actually go over to Earth here, I can uh, show the magnetosphere. And as you can see, the moon doesn't actually orbit in the magnetosphere, so the moon is sitting there completely unprotected with no magnetosphere. But if I went ahead and just uh, added one, eventually we should be able to fade out this comet tail. One. Let's uh, set it to one. Set it to one gauss. There we go. And now it's safe. Because I did give it a kind of rich iron core, which should generate a magnetosphere. It looks like it actually still has a comet tail in there, though. Very interesting. But nonetheless, there we go. There's uh, our Earth and Moon as kind of gas dwarfs, I guess. These wouldn't be gas giants, just gas worlds, hydrogen worlds. Hmm. Well, nonetheless. The next suggestion was, let's go ahead and launch a new simulation here with just our base planets. Actually, let's go ahead and load this simulation where I have like less objects actually orbiting around. Name solar system. There we go. Way less things to actually process. Um, somebody asking me, it's Lord Zombie says, take a red normal sized star, so just a red dwarf, and make it orbit our sun behind the Kuiper belt and recreate the nemesis. Someone think that Neptune orbit is being affected by another star called Nemesis. And recreate Nemesis. What is a Nemesis? Is this supposed to be like red, Planet 9 or something? Someone thinks that Neptune's orbit is being affected by another star called Nemesis. like a theory thing because uh there's very likely not a star out here do believe that smaller objects are being affected by possibly planet nine but not really a star well i don't really know that theory or any uh history revolving around that but uh what would be a good red dwarf to drop here proxima centauri well, how much mass is proxima centauri 129 Jupiters, while our sun is one sun. Hmm. Do we have any smaller red dwarfs? Oh, I think Proxima Centauri is like one of the smallest. That's 151. Proxima Centauri is 129. Yeah, I'm not really seeing any smaller red dwarfs. We throw a UI Skatai out here. I, I imagine that wouldn't affect anything. Let's just go ahead and throw in uh, Proxima Centauri. It seems like it's the smallest star that we actually have here. So we want to throw it beyond the Kuiper Belt. So past Pluto, should I put it like kind of in the Kuiper Belt or like officially past the Kuiper Belt, like way out here? I think I'm going to drop it right into the Kuiper Belt right here, right on the edges of like the uh, thicker portion of it. So let's go ahead and just throw it in. And let's speed up the simulation and see what effects it actually has on these worlds. Okay, so I see it already pulling on Neptune pretty hard. And there's the sun actually being tugged on a bit. Let's see what our orbits are starting to look like. So as you can see, everything is becoming a little bit eccentric and kind of distorting a bit, these orbits and stretching out towards the star. What's going on here? It seems like the uh, simulation's physics have crashed a little bit. There's Proxima Centauri. What's just caught in its orbit? What's this red? This little dwarf planet. So it's been pulled into orbit around Proxima Centauri rather than our sun, very interesting. And that's where the simulation just kind of crapped out. So let's slow down the simulation. Hopefully get it, like, stable again. Is it going to be re able to recover? I 
I don't think so. I think the simulation completely broke. But, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, redo this, but I won't go so fast. That was, like, five days per second, I believe. So let's change it to just three. And let's just straight up drop, uh, for a little bit more drastic effect, let's just drop, uh, Proximus Centauri right into the Kuiper Belt. So let's go ahead and boost it up, or drop it down. No, that was not three days per second. That's what it, I think the simulation dropped down to when it froze up. Already throwing a bunch of asteroids around. And you can see that there. Let's go ahead and zoom in and get a better view of that. Let's go ahead and view orbits again. And as you can see, it's distorting a lot of the orbits. There's some AI just kind of freaking out a little bit. Not quite enough to uh, be pulled away from the sun, though. The simulation is stuttering a bit. Okay, Neptune is actually... Neptune was captured by Proxima Centauri. That's very interesting. It's because it orbited so close to it, though. Let me uh, pause the simulation here, and let's go to our sun real quick. The sun. What is this in Jupiter's? 10,048. Okay, so it's roughly nine times the mass of... Proxima Centauri. And I guess what would be important to check would probably be our very own Earth. So let's go ahead and slow down time here. And, uh, let's just pause the game. And let's check on Earth. How's Earth doing? Ooh, it's 27 degrees. It's actually gotten really, really hot. Probably be due to the heat of that star, come to think of it. I wonder if it would actually cool down if it was pulled further away, but closer to the other star. Hmm, that's actually an interesting uh, thing to think about. Let's do that. Let's put Earth a little bit further away from the sun. So let's increase its semi-major axis by quite a bit. Let's put it past Mars. And let's see if that cools it back down, even though it's actually closer to Proxima Centauri. It's over. <laughs> That's very cool. Let's go ahead and drop its semi major axis back down to where it would be 10 degrees. It's orbiting really close to Mars. Kind of dangerously close right there. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't have much influence on Mars. It's still relatively cool. It looks like it's stabilized at negative 13, so let's go ahead and drop it down to like 1.25. I got it down to 1.24. Ooh, now it's having like kind of an extreme winter going on. But it does warm back up. This is getting a little bit closer. So I didn't actually have to increase it by that much. Okay, that's a little bit too warm. Let's try right there. Yeah, this is a little bit more Earth-like temperatures right here. Maybe a little bit warm during the summer, but that's pretty close. So I did have to adjust the orbit of Earth to actually make it kind of fit in a little bit better. As you see, Pluto is really far out there. I don't know if it was that far out there before. I know it has a pretty eccentric, pretty far orbit, but that's really out there. And what's going on here? Something caught... there it is. Izeon? A Zion? It's a really green looking planet. Which somebody did ask, can I change the uh, colors on the plants? Well, I certainly can. Uh, who asked that? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was Derp Sauce Gaming. Uh... Yeah, yeah, he was just mentioning, uh, yeah, it was Derp Sauce Gaming, he was just mentioning that I could change the colors. I don't think he had any actual requests, but uh, let's go ahead and just make this a nice hot pink world. Why not? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's get a little bit red in there and then just... There we go. <laughs> I can't really get a nice pink going on. It kind of wants to turn into a dark purple. 
So let's change this red to a nice hot pink. It ain't quite doing it, but there's our pink world. You can see it better in the preview up there. Let's change the uh, lighting to flashlight. There we go. A little gumball world. So, there you go. I would even change the orbit line to pink. As you can see, it's kind of orbiting at a polar orbit, not actually a, uh, like, what, what's it? Just a normal orbit? What's the technical name for that? I know polar orbits were poles. Equator, equator orbit? I don't know. Correct me on that. I don't know what that is. Oh, I, I'd, I'd just say normal orbit, I guess. But, uh... Anyways, yeah, that's just a few random user suggestions. I don't know what to actually title this video or anything. But, uh, hopefully new space engine exploration either coming tomorrow or Sunday. I know I've been delaying a few days. I probably have a lot of suggestions piled up, but, uh... It might be a two-hour video. But, oh well. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.